Hey YouTube, uh, I thought by thought I'd stop by and answer some questions. Uh, my last video got quite a few uh, responses, and it's kind of interesting how that's all working out on there. But uh, someone uh, had mentioned, oh, someone asked me if I was an atheist, and the answer is absolutely yes, I am an atheist. Uh, in fact, I'm so much of an atheist that I. I don't even take modern religion seriously. It's so difficult for me to even uh, explain why I'm a, an atheist, mainly because it's just not even a, there is there is no alternative uh, possibility. There's not a possibility that I would ever become uh, theological. It ain't going to happen. So it's, it's uh, just thrown out. I don't, I don't deal with modern religion. Uh, now, on this stuff, I'm really, really interested in the human aspects of first and second century Christianity. So that's where my interest lies in the theology. And it's really been kind of interesting because I've actually had Christians that have asked me questions about some of the early theologies. Because there are Christians that are actually really interested in this stuff. Um, and uh, it's been a fascinating ride. Um, second question I got, or another another question that I didn't want to answer, someone had asked me about a, uh, it was about a church father, a uh, not a church father, well, a Catholic priest uh, named Baron, who is uh, on YouTube talking about YouTube heresies and stuff like that. Um, uh, do, 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 and, well, my opinion on it, the the idea that these are Markianite. First off, this is Catholic tradition, Markianite, and then he goes on to specifically says that Irenaeus is a saint. This is all Catholic tradition, and the overriding theme in his uh, video, which I thought was really, uh, it, it was humorous. You know, I agreed actually with some of his stuff, but uh, the idea that you you people are not smart enough to read this book, that's that's typical Catholic. That's very typical Catholic. You people are not smart enough to read this book uh, without Catholic priests telling you what it means. Uh, and uh, that's that's what his argument boiled down to. And uh, I thought that was really kind of humorous. You know, he goes in and talks about Jonah, how that's metaphorical and how, you know, the, the 5,000 year uh, creation, uh, you know, the creation 5,000 years ago, what have you, uh, these things may be metaphorical and evolved. And I agree that they are metaphorical and that they evolved. That's really not a problem. The proposition, of course, is why in the hell would you believe that somebody rose from the dead? <laughs> you know, why is that not metaphorical? Uh, but then he goes on to say exactly that. And so you need this wisdom of the Catholic Church in order to read this text. And this is the same argument they've had forever. You know, this is what caused the uh, Protestant uh, Reformation in a lot of ways was the text. You know, it was only in Latin and these Catholic Church fathers had a monopoly on the text so that nobody else could read it. So... You know, this is this, that's part of the Protestant Ref Reformation, so or Pro Protestant Revolution, whatever, what, however you want to look at that. So, um, yeah, there's those two things, and uh, let's see. I had another question, and I I may have to dig a little bit deeper into this, and this has to do with uh, the historical references in Josephus, uh, Tacitus, um, particularly. I I don't know if they mentioned Suetonius. Uh, yeah, Suetonius, Suetonius and Pliny a little bit. Uh, the, the problem with these texts is that these people only have one of two options. They really only have one of two options on this stuff. By the time Josephus is writing, by the time that Tacitus is writing, by the time that Pliny and Suetonius are writing, Christianity does in fact exist. It exists. The theology exists. Their proposition is, was this guy real or is he figurative? That's your options right there. You know, and when you get into someone like, say, Josephus, Josephus records rumor as fact, in essence. That's that's his biggest problem. And besides the forgery concept of the Jose, uh, the uh, Flavian Testimonia, which is, I think it's kind of obvious that that's a forgery. Nevertheless, uh, the idea that when you get into Josephus, he records uh, rumor as true. You know, he talks about Vespasian healing people in Alexandria. Well, that didn't happen. Nobody got healed by, well, I can't remember if it was a blind man or what, got healed by Vespasian. 
ludicrous, but he records it as true. How good of a historian is he? Not so good. Same proposition with Tacitus, um, although Tacitus has the tendency to believe that there that truth is an average in here. Um, so if, say, for example, uh, and I don't know what the exact figures are or anything like that, if if uh, Tacitus had uh, an idea, you know, from Christians that Christians were slaughtered during the era of Nero, and they said. I don't know. Let's just throw a number out there: hundred thousand. That hundred thousand Christians slaughtered by Nero. And I, again, I don't have the text in front of me, so I can't really uh, tell you what he says. But he'll take an average. He'll say, you know, look, we've got evidence that this didn't happen at all. We've got evidence from these guys that say that a hell of a lot of people were were killed. Yeah, must be in between. So, so then he goes on, and he takes this rumor, and all of a sudden, rumor becomes history. And this is the problem with Tacitus. Now, when you get into Plenty the Elder, though, and and some of the, and look, they do the best they can. They do the best they can. What am I supposed to say about Tacitus and Josephus? I love their texts. I love them. On the other hand, you know how trustworthy are they? They're not so trustworthy, unfortunately. And when you get into Plenty the Younger, what is he talking about? Because what it sounds like he's talking about is a cult that's worshiping the sun. And that's what it sounds like he's talking about called Christianity. A Christian cult that is worshiping the rising sun in the morning. That's exactly what it sounds like he's talking about. So, again, with all of these people, the, the proposition for them, each individual, is was this guy real or was he not? The Christians are saying he is. He was, he was somebody that existed back there. The Christian stories already existed, and their theology obviously existed. That's really not, not the problem. Uh, the problem is how do the historians react to it, you know, whether they buy it or not. What, do they buy the theology? And some of them do. You know, but then again, you know, in the case of Josephus, he buys a lot of stuff that isn't true. And uh, same thing with Tacitus. They just, Tacitus is, neither one of them are, are spectacular historians quote unquote great writers and i love their text love the crap out of them nevertheless uh would i trust them on everything of course not everything on in josephus and tacitus is you kind of have to look at skeptically um i like i have since like plenty the elder a little bit better or uh, plenty the younger um and plenty the elder but uh you know and and it's this is the idea, you know, and the late great Carl Sagan, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Uh, you know, when people argue that this guy was historical, there is nothing about this guy that looks historical. And when we the arg and everybody's tried. Everybody's tried to figure out, you know, is this guy real? You know, we've got people coming out of where it works with nails. Old nails. These must be the nails that Jesus was hung on. You gotta be kidding me. They're, they're backing up extraordinary claims with more extraordinary claims. And this is ultimately the problem with the historical Jesus. The, uh, there's nothing in the text that looks real. There's nothing that looks real. Virgin birth, that's BS. You know, the idea of uh, resurrecting from the dead, it looks like BS. So, again, the claims are way out there. And you really need some hard evidence for this guy. Um, the existence of Pilate or uh, Agrippa or um, Herod Antipas or Herod the Great, any of those people, that doesn't prove Jesus existed, but it does give you a time frame um, that may or may not be important. So again, and and again, um, am I 100% that there's no guy back there? I'm pretty certain that this guy has nothing to do with any of his texts. That's what I'm fairly certain of. Uh, whether or not, uh, you know, if there was a, a historic historical person back there named Jesus, he's not in this text. Not in these texts. You know, they just kind of uh, plugged in somebody. So, yeah. So that's all I've got for you today. And uh, I'll, I'm going to step this up a little bit and talk a little bit more online. So, uh, I'll talk at you later, and bye.